I was struck by a phrase from our opening prayer. Love everyone in truth of heart. Love everyone in truth of heart. How difficult that is. I mean, sometimes the people we're closest to in our families, we don't always have the patience that we need, don't always respond. I mean, the last two days I've heard confessions, both first confessions of second graders and uh, kids preparing for confirmation, so eighth graders. And my second grade and eighth grade confession could have been very much <laughs> like what I was hearing, you know? You fought with your siblings. Well, I only had one, so I could only fight with my brother. Uh, you know, I didn't obey mom and dad. I didn't do my chores, whatever it is. And then slowly, God begins to open our hearts to see to love one another first as we ourselves want to be loved. So as I point out, you know, when you become a parent, would you want your children to act the way you do toward your parents right now? And they'll say, well, no. <laughs> I don't. Well, think about before you act. You know, open your heart wider. That's the challenge, too, if we understand what's going on in the gospel. Okay, last week, Jesus begins with what could be his inaugural address there in the synagogue in uh, Capernaum. Well, in Nazareth, I should say, because he's just come from Capernaum. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to bring good news to the poor, liberty to captives, announce the year of favor to the Lord. So he's saying, open. I've come to bring God's love to all, particularly to those who are the most forgotten. And originally, as we see in today's reading, people say, wow, this is neat what he's saying. He's saying that this is coming now. But then they begin to think, who does he think he is? Isn't he Joseph the carpenter's son? He's not a trained rabbi. Who is he to think he can? Um, explain the prophet Isaiah. And then he goes on to say that when God sends someone, he often sends someone to people that we don't think deserve it. So Elijah and Elisha, who are they going to? One is going to the widow in Zarephath, who's a pagan, she's not a Jew. And then who does Elisha cure but a Syrian military commander who happens to have some skin disease, which a lot of things got lumped together as leprosy, whether it was or not, we don't know. Why is God curing the pagans. Why aren't you doing in Nazareth what we've heard you've done in Capernaum and in Cana? And you're telling us that God loves those people as much as he loves us, the people of the covenant? And so some get so indignant at what he's saying that they drive him out of town. Who do we think is not worthy of God's grace? 
And how do we grow to have the kind of heart that we're called to have, to love everyone in truth of heart, only by having conversion of heart. And part of it begins by understanding what God reveals to the prophet Jeremiah in our first reading. But even before you were born, I knew you, and I loved you, God says, that you were precious in my sight. But even before your mother knew she was pregnant, I called you by name. I mean, if we could only allow that to really sink into our bones and know how much we are loved, then perhaps we can more and more recognize that that same love is given to others. God loves us all as brothers and sisters. And so we then come to that challenge which is given to us in our second reading from 1 Corinthians, the famous love chapter, that love is patient and kind, not jealous or boastful. It doesn't seek its own good, but the good of others. It's not quick-tempered, doesn't brood over injury, rejoices in the truth. How often are our hearts not that open? I mean, I struggle with that, certainly. And so we're called to ask God to give us the heart of Jesus, which is not easy, but it's a gift that God wants to give to each of us that our world might grow, become different. How often, you know, I was just looking, I, I forget the figure, how many trillions of dollars are spent on weapons, of which the US is by far the largest buyer of weapons and also builder of weapons sent to others. And if you look at that in comparison to US aid or things of that nature, it's a drop. Those things are a drop in the bucket. Do we care about the fact that some millions of people are probably going to starve to death and are on the verge of starving to death in Afghanistan? But that's the Taliban. Those are our enemies. The people in the countryside are clearly not our enemies. And yet, obviously, we can't allow the money that's sitting in banks that were from the last government to be released. We have to punish the leaders by killing the people. It's interesting that Doctors Without Borders is working in about four provinces to help feed people, bring medical care, and other things of that nature. Where are our hearts? How open are they? That's really the challenge of our readings today. The greatest thing is love. The hardest thing is love. The greatest gift is love. How 
do we know? Because we see Jesus on the cross, loving us to the end. So let us pray today for that gift that our hearts might be open more and more, that we might come to love everyone in truth of heart.